Hi, John Wanalo here, uh, Oru Auckland, New Zealand. Today is Sunday, the 30th of October 2016. I'm running this video but cutting out the people who didn't want to be in it. Uh, and I've got my focus on Jim Wikutu straight ahead there and the uh, other chiefs and uh, people on the other side who are uh, going to be in the line of where I'm standing to talk. Uh, so most of the complaints about me videoing them is on the right hand side of the video where the flag, I've got the flag um, blocking them out. Okay, so that's, that's I'm, I'm really more interested in what we are saying and how my presentation is going where I never get a, a full full presentation that's always been disrupted in the past and when I go into that marae on the other side it's a different story because uh, uh, I, I, have, I have more of a say to the to the subject in hand is this flag that um, people got their own interpretations of it and I'm putting the right chief's interpretation of it why they sat down the chiefs I'm talking about the men sat down and pulled out the design of the flag they wanted to use and all these signia, insignia on it belongs to the Crown Corporation in Britain, Westminster and it is, it is not of our own making it was already designed before the chiefs chose it so um, and it's the British system of commerce banking trading, free passage through the world, um, Templar, Vatican, Kings, King George, um, uh, titles, and also um, um, Admiralty, and Military, Navy, and Government in Britain, to our own recognised sovereignty here, of our own, in recognition of us in a private contract with King William IV. Now that's what it is. The main part of this flag is that it's a private contract in business to transactions of land, property, assets and everything personal that belongs to the chiefs here and their natural resources and names and birth certificates, marriage certificates and all those are pertinent to the decision making of the natives which the king said it belongs to them. Uh, now I'll run the video and unfortunately I didn't want to cut out anything I'm talking about and if I'm getting interjections while I'm on my feet, I'm on my feet in a proper city in Tikanga when you're on your feet nobody talks, nobody talks until it's finished. Now we have um, uh, Hohepa, he's done an excellent job, I commended him on his job of keeping the peace on all the different uh, hapu, uh, having their say at the same time and interjecting on one another and you'll see this is normal. When you hear the, the yelling and screaming, it's normal because like Paulina jumps up because she's part of Mohi Manukau, um, old Moriori Turihu Patapurai history that people seems to forget that the spirit part of it is that that's the part that's missing. She's trying to um, um, tell people uh, from a Samoan perspective because we're all the same bloodlines in the Pacific. We come from Tahiti and my father's side, the Wano side, from uh, Rapanui and, and Raiatea Islands. Uh, and so does uh, Tainui and, and Ngāti Pro and Ngāti Kahunu and Ngāpuhi uh, they come from the same place in Tahiti and Arawa comes from Hawaii it's still one or the other in the bloodlines mix so you have to define which one the king talked to which one the, uh, the, 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 the contract was made with the contract was made with the Ngāpuhi chief you see all the other chiefs were making deals with the Australian crown corporations, not from Britain, 
they were dealing with the New South Wales government, uh, part of their contract, uh, and, and selling lands on, on, uh, with that uh, government in exile, a foreign government, uh, running this place without authority from Britain. New Zealand had to have its own sovereignty. It never had any. And all the land titles were illegal. So it's still illegal now because of John Key inside this marae and the, his memorial outside this marae is the 1840 treaty. That's got no end date. That's illegal. You've got to have an end date on your contract. You see? So our, our contract with King William at the top end was infinite. It could go on forever. It, it was physically face to face to go and sever it or keep it going. It was perpetual in itself because of our decision with this flag is the receipt of that contract. It, as long as it flies, it puts us still in a contract, even though we're not trading. It's still live. The flag is live. I'm telling them I'm there for the flag and nothing else. I'm there for the flag of what it's going to do to save the whole world because of the eight point star New World Order and King William that put it together. Okay, in his legislative acts, 1830 to 87, 1830 to 1837 applies inside the King's Bench Court on the other side, not in this court, on the other side. So that's the part I'm talking about, this flag, that the chief sat in the paddock at Ngaere under the Pohutkawa tree, up from Matari Bay, and they discussed what a chief would do with a king. Right? There, there's no, no ladies there, this was the chiefs talking about business, right? about commercial business. They weren't talking about, oh, we're going to use it to, to welcome people and to um, um, you know, make good things for them. No, it was a war flag because they were in a war mood of stranglers and everybody coming here and jumping on the land and stealing this and that and <coughs> using weapons against them. So they had to get something that was going to stick it was the British, most of the people were British coming here and landing all over the place, the convicts from Australia. And those convicts here are still here doing the same thing in Parliament in Wellington. The surnames will lead you right to those pirates that came from New South Wales, put on a boat and came here and started selling land illegally. So those are going to come to a head. And this court, under these native chiefs, and I can name one, Manahi Tangaidi, is from Ngāti Pro, right? And so I've known him for a long time to be doing court work. And his uh, cousin is in the Waitangi Tribunal, and so there. Uh, it, it makes sense that he knows what he's talking about when it comes to land, and native land, and so he'll be talking inside the Waitangi Marae at, on the 6th of February with the rest of the uh, 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 chiefs and another judge. I, I just hear now from Willie Pato in, in Otawa Marae, just rang me up a minute ago and said they've got another native chief up there. Then now we've got two. See? So we're getting there. We've got a Whakamininga set up on the 28th of October inside this Marae, Titi Marae. And that was successful. That's what a king he asked for. Chief King asked for former Whakamininga. Right? So he, he got his wish. That's the, the best thing that would have happened after all these years. Finally, he got a Whakamininga together. And there, we go with that, with the flag, on the other side, into the King's Bench Court, and we can say, we have a whakamininga, we have a government, we have a, we have a native government, we have uh, a judge, we have a court here, we've got a flag of a king, we've got banknotes, we've got uh, a trade, we've got partnerships still with British people over there, we've got companies set up in Britain, in the company's office, ready for the Moai Crown King William Trust, and the Moai... Uh, powerhouse Group Limited Limited Commercial Company under the King's Bench Court and the King's Bench Court Judge and Flag and Sheriff, myself, Land Commissioner fits all the boxes, ticks all the boxes for us to start operating as this flag says around the world on the four corners of the earth. Right? The spirit part comes with it. Those women that do that at the home Hokaina, the home fires burning to keep the man working. The man goes out, Darangatera, uh, responsible because it's their land. Darangatera is the, is the gatekeeper and the landlord in a commercial world under this British flag. Okay, this is the British flag that we have authority to use all over the world 
our own sovereignty power inside this bank. We don't use King William's sovereignty, we use our own. In other words, him that recognises us as self-government running when we're ready. We have more than one government set up here and in corporations under this Queen's Bench Court on this side to deal with the land in the commercial world, whereas on the other side I'm going there with the native judges, native court judges, as it was in Kororareka in the Bay of Islands. They had, with James Busby, they had set up James Busby. Uh, he came over in about 1830, 32, and with the natives, he spent a lot of time with them right up till 1834 when they commissioned this flag design and in, in 1834 on the 20th of March 1834 Captain Clendon got off his ship HMS Fortitude and proclaimed that moment he stepped on the land the land belongs to the King of England King William IV monarch sovereign okay so there he had the first Crown Corporation title on that village now called Russell, called Rareka. And the ship of Admiralty mast is on top of Mikey Hill above Russell. That's that's the native title there where this flag fly is going to be flying to resume title over the land that the Na Navy set up its families there. They remain there, but the authority goes back to King William IV and King Ernest Augustus the fifth, King of England, uh, King of Britain, UK, Hanover, and Altair, New Zealand, and Pacific Islands, and the world, Commonwealth, Government of the World. Moai, Crown, King William IV, Federal State, Commonwealth, Government of the World. Okay, there you go, in this eight point star of King William III and St. Patrick's Church Order, Dublin, to Westminster Parliament. There. Ernest Augustus, King Ernest Augustus IV, uh, King Ernest Augustus V, and his son, Ernest Augustus, Prince Regent, is our oath of office monarch sovereign. We are nominating inside this Waitangi Marae, him into Westminster Parliament in February. Okay. In lieu of that, I will make that announcement on this video and at Waitangi, uh, uh, up with the chiefs uh, before Waitangi Day. Um, we're we're going to do this, I'm going to do this before the elections of uh, US uh, President uh, and before the, the uh, ship, the nuclear ship comes to New Zealand to make this flag uh, the authority. It's legal now because we opened up the uh, Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court on the 15th of April 2016 for business and for commercial use of this flag. It's legal from that point and also uh, the mandate coming from this Marae to the other Marae to enforce the acts of King William IV, 1837, and this flag is now legal with the pound note, the King Tafio pound note uh, in the Waikato, Te Waikato uh title and Hongihika title the time they went to Cambridge University in England and came back and set up um, at um, Mangatauteri, Pa in the Cambridge, in the Cambridge area uh, that title with uh, that chief. Two chiefs, Te Rewaikato, Whareherehe, Manuka, and the Manuka Land Company titles go together in the Scottish titles here in Auckland. At that time, the government, Parliament, Britain, set up in Auckland uh, with the Manuka titles and the Ututonga titles from the Bay of Islands. Okay, so that wraps that up. Now I'm going to switch it on and let you see. I wanted one, uh, um, those people that didn't want their photos on it's a shame really because they they are not they have different ideas about what i'm saying and everyone to themselves but uh i'm best to have my own hui there with the chiefs and where i can talk quite freely without interjections or the people who are uh, um, have nothing to do with what i'm saying 
and they got their own ideas about the flag. All those people who are flying this flag, you have the flag for certain reasons, but it can't uh, be effective uh, in front of John Key and his government. There's one government running this country, and so you need a government to try and think you can do the same thing as him over these lands. As far as I'm concerned, a government has got authority over lands, and so that's what we established in Britain as dual government under a Moai, um, Crown, King William IV, Federal State, Commonwealth Government of the World. So that's all around the world with this flag. Okay, so that's overarches any titles set down on this land because of the trust involved with the Moai Crown King William Trust here in that King's Bench Court, uh, Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court extends to the rest of the world through Westminster. So it has to go backwards, back into Westminster, and then go from there and around the world. And my job is to, as a, a, a Moai Crown Native um, Land Commissioner, is to go to England with this flag and raise it in Westminster and in Devon, where everybody left to come here. Uh, and from Britain and, and the rest of the world at, in the William Yard by his m memorial. The Navy uh, dockyards is called William Yard. So I'll go there, put the flag up there in respect of who we are in contract with him and his memorials to the Moai Statue Memorial. I'll put the flag over there beside Moai in Queen Elizabeth's Second Great Court in London as Mana Whenua, our, our, our title to the, to the rest of the world. Okay, so the, the four corners of the earth on this flag of Admiralty, the blue you see is the sea and the sky, and the uh, four corners, Nga Ho E Fa or Nga Atua E Wa, four corners of the earth where this flag and our um, eight point star New World Order goes. Okay, so we're watching the Queen's corporate system collapse in America and It'll collapse here with John Key and the fraud corruption inside the Queen's Bench Court in this court here where all the trouble comes with John Key and his contingency, Crown Corporations, private trusts. Okay, they're operating private trusts. The only way you're going to get a private trust is from the flag. So we're going on the other side to renew their occupation titles or sever them or seize them all. That's up to the Tomata. I'm just telling them their legal rights. I'm just telling them what's good for the country, for the sake of the uh, people settled here, to look after their interests, financial investment interests, and not private interests in what John Key is doing for the elite families um, taking most of the revenue from the land and its resources here and the rest of the world. So this flag does legally affect the whole world where it's gone with the Pope and the Queen to give it to anybody they wish to make money from. It is our military flag to protect us with the British military responsible for our financial investment interests. We use the financial martial law to recover all debts owed inside that marae over the Cook Street property under a Manukau land company Scotland title. Okay? That's what they can't do anything about. If they've committed fraud on their land, I've caught them all out. In the Auckland District Court with the judge dismissed the case against me because the police had insufficient evidence. You'll you'll notice that the police have their own law. This has busted their law because they wrote their own law up and used it on me. They picked on the wrong person. Okay, they picked on the wrong person. When it comes to land titles and who's standing on the land, who's got things stuck on the land, it's only stuck above the land, and the land is still there. belongs to the chiefs, the rangatira, of these hapus. Okay? Here goes. I'll switch it on. Um, it's unfortunate that um, all the screaming and, and, uh, and whatnot always goes on in Marae because of the um, backlash on interrupting my presentation and that's unfortunate but hell, that the reality is I can't just keep cutting out the bits that I want to make public 
everyone should have kept quiet when I'm talking. I, I didn't have that respect myself as having information that I'm trying to give back to them. And they're clouding it with other, other means. And when you're on your feet in the marae, you have the floor. No, no, no one should interject or talk while you're on your feet. It's up to the tomato to bang the wall and tell you to stop when they're hurting us. Okay, so uh, it's sort of um, um, got a different twist to all the hui's I've been to in this marae for over 20 years. I've been coming here and trying to say the same thing. And it has not gone through one ear and the other. It's always because someone else has got something better. I haven't seen anything effective as this yet. It's because somebody's talking, they haven't got the, the rest of the titles underneath themselves, talking on their feet. I'm talking to my own surname in Rayate and Rabanui, East Island, with that behind me. Okay? So anybody that can do that and, and, and state you who you are, that's what happened with Whakaminia. They got them all to stand up for their different uh, hapu uh, chiefs that signed the, the treaty. See, when you, when you sign a treaty inside this, that's for here. Those ones stood up for here. But on the other side, it's a different story. In that marae on the other side is a different story. I've, I've still got to sort that out. I've still got to sort out the chiefs on that first title. And I can only say it was Tira Waikato, Whareherehere, Manigo, and Hongihika. Those two, that, that's all I care about in the whole world. That, that's, that's the only two chiefs who went to England and could speak English uh, quite clearly to understand what a document is in transactions on land, property, and assets that the Crown came here for to make money out of, and people as, as being, uh, as being uh, prized possessions. And your prized possession belong to the King or the Queen, you see? So all those things are important inside the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. You can't, you can't speak otherwise if you, you, you have mixed up Queen stuff on this side and documents. Documents with UCC law and all the rest of it on this side. And Admiralty on this side is Vice Admiral. Admiralty on that side is King's Admiral. He's the one that created the Admiralty laws that the Queen's using in this variety. Okay, you get that? Okay, here goes. Oh, I better go back to the beginning. I'm going to run the thing further when, when it starts getting loud. I have to cut it this way. Pity. This is what what really dampened this presentation. This is the most Im important presentation in the whole world that stopped. I, I want to make this public. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to cut it out. I'm just trying to cut it out.
there, there we are. So that's what I wanted to say. Oh, I thought I stopped it. So that's how my my presentation went. Um, that's all I wanted to, to run this video for because um, it's very important even if they got a snippet of what I'm saying. I never get I never ever got a straight run in this marae ever. I never because someone jumped on their feet and spoiled it all and I lost my my uh, spiel to say what I wanted to say and people never got it. You see I never even read out a five minute proclamation. And that's unfortunate because uh, I, I would have done it in 10 minutes if I didn't get stopped. Because I knew if I stood up, I'd read out the proclamation and I only needed 10 minutes to do the whole presentation. It was all over. But then that train of thought got blasted when someone talks while I'm on my feet. When you're on a marae, the person who's got the floor inside the escort has the say. And it's up to the tomata to wang the wall, bang the wall, or bang the floor with his stick to stop. That's the sign to stop. They've had enough. Right? I, I, I used to do this in front of Pita Apiata. And he bangs his thing on the wall, or on the floor, his tokotoko, stick, walking stick. And it meant to me to stop. Now what uh, Reuben uh, Heihei did was, says, Enoho, sit down. As soon as he says that, I'll sit down, you see. But I had some trailing words afterwards because I wasn't quite finished. And, and it's a funny feeling to, to be told to sit down. But they got it. There was no need to go on any further and try and push hard sell, something that's, that people find it very difficult. You have to go to classes, a lot of classes, to learn what I do because uh, it's, it's, it's more than just the flag. There's more to it than just this flag for beaten up and down the road on. And the more people understand that this is the crown jewels inside the flag for the whole world. It, in fact, it controlled the whole world through the Pope and uh, uh, the Rothschild banks. And they've, they've got control of everything. And they use the military, under this military part of this flag, that's what I'm saying, King is military, to speak in Māori, to interpret to military or navy or the Governor General or the Prime Minister what the flag means, okay? So he has to come back to the Tomata and tell them, form a whakamininga. He got his wish. We did form a whakamininga, and people got uh, stood up to to go behind their ancestors that signed uh, Te Tiriti. Well, that's in this court. They signed Te Tiriti, but not on the, you can't say that in the King's Bench Court. You can't say it in the King's Bench, Bench Court because you have to talk to the captain of the ship, okay? So that's why I'm wearing the eight point star because the captain of the ship is the one that's proclaiming the land belongs to the king. So I'm standing there uh, as a surrogate of a king, not the queen, the king, but the captain of a ship. And I'm going to stand on the other side because if the chief, king, in the military says, you're the captain of the ship, over the other side, I own the land, he says, and you do your thing, what, what, what a captain would do. So I, I say I'm, I'm the captain to say the land belongs to the chief, the rangatira, and not to the king or the queen. It diffuses those titles here on the land and puts it back where it was before that captain got off his ship and proclaimed with the evidence. So he's got the evidence from the king and we've got the native evidence of that captain's title that was pre-sold by two native chiefs that I'm saying, Te Rawaikato Wharaherehere, Manikau, and Hongihika, in the ten or more years from 1820 when they went to England to learn the tricks of the trade and how combat works and, and conquering. The word conquering, I put it on my Facebook site today, of the word conquering of the chiefs after 1834 went around conquering other, other tribes. Uh, uh, and killing them with, with muskets. You see, it, it, it was muskets at a, at a distance for taking out their uh, opponents instead of close combat with a, cl a club. And they had no match with the musket. So that's how you took land as possessions of the king. 
at that time still applies now. We, we, we're doing it inside the King's Bench Court with two native court judges, right? The judges, and I'm going in there in that court on the 6th of February as the King's Bench Court Sheriff. In other words, the registrar of those chiefs who who made the deal with uh, with uh, Captain Clendon, J.R. Clendon, uh, at that period of time, 20th of March, 1834, at Kororareka on that land block. Now we've got Matatu Waka, uh, Jim uh, Wick or two, and um, um, his uh, part in the play as being in the confederation of, of tribes uh, uh, to um, do the honours uh, with Ngāpui uh, to raise the flag. Okay, so the authority comes from inside that King's Bench Court, goes outside to the ship of our partnership with King William IV, not the Queen, the King. The Queen is on this side in Titi Marae, stuck there with John Key and his memorial outside there. So John Key is relegated back to that Marae and we are on the other side, straight to the King. The real landowner, uh, Red Chief. Okay, Red Chief, court, flag, King, administrators of government. We have a, a native government in place. Uh, that uh, uh, was aired uh, at the um, Congress assembled inside that team that I hear um, and um, they made their presentation and that goes into Parliament is open now for business right up to the 6th where we make our laws and we present them on the 6th the 4th the 5th and the 6th it'll be probably the 3rd the 4th 5th and 6th this time next year 2017 when I've already made presentation inside the Waitangi Marae. There, nobody is going to go in there with anything less than the captain of the ship at the 20th of March, 1834. That title is in that Ava Marae. Okay, so that's really wraps it up uh, on this video. And I'll, I'll just play a little bit towards the end to see what, um, what comes up, but I think no, I think that's that's enough. I'll leave this video just as it is, cut right there. Okay, uh, to Hohepa and uh, and the Tomata, uh, I've cut this video like this, so that it um, cuts out the others um, who didn't want their faces on Facebook. Um, and um, unfortunately for me, everything that I say goes onto YouTube as evidence of this event leading up to the 6th of February. So I had a speak with um, uh, Willie Pater from Otao Marae and their uh, 38 Marais around uh, Ngāpui, Nūtunu uh, that I'll be going up to Pangaru to put on a presentation for them of this same subject to fill them in in plenty of time to understand where this flag is going to around the world in trade straight out and the uh, funding will come straight out of the flag and the land. Okay, there's no need to borrow, borrow money from anyone. The thing is, the, with this, the legal side of it is that the British are liable or legally obligated to recover all debts in the pound note. So we're, we've made the pound note that I've got our faces on already. Um, so it's too late for any changes because I've put it in place with Jamie, with the Patrick name, with St. Patrick's order, and I've got that... Uh, a face on it uh, to cover the eight points on the star of Patrick in Dublin, um, Ireland, back to Westminster under King William the uh, Third um, um, Parliament, uh, where he um, um, dethroned uh, King James and took over the um, St Patrick Order. It was the Queen uh, through Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth that gave that St. Patrick's order to the Pope and that's where it's all gone pear shape right into complete fraud and corruption of the King's Bench Court. So the King's Bench Court is going to hold the Queen's Bench Court to account and audit on the HM Treasury in England and the Treasury here, the New Zealand Treasury office in Wellington to find where all the money went. We're going to audit 
and investigate every piece of square inch of land in this country. And I've got a base figure of one trillion pounds on each fraudulent person's head running right now online. And that's real. So that's up to the British military to recover that because they're our partners. They're our partners in this commercial flag um, contract private business. Okay? So they, 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 they are obligated to protect our financial investment interests and apply what we say the financial martial law of force to recover all the debt, including 77 Cook Street property in Auckland, New Zealand. We won our case, I did. Um, I, I, I won my case, I'll talk for myself. I won my case through citations and my barrister to the judge in the Auckland District Court when they arrested me and the latest judge found me uh, not guilty and dismissed the police CIB uh, case against me. So that put the police aside from tampering with this business with this flag in that marae on the other side, straight to England. It's nobody's business what I say or do or state or make proclamations, or make statements, or affidavits. It's nobody's business. But between me and the chiefs I uh, represent in the Taumata here at um, Waitangi Marae and Titi Marae and the Confederation Chiefs around the country, right through the four regions, uh, Te Tai Rafiti, Te Tai Tonga, Te Tai Hauru, Te Tai uh, Tokoro, Parliament Boundary Republic areas. Okay, so that's that's telling it to you uh, on a perspective that's never been told that way before. This has come out of Mohi Manakau and the Rogan family judges in Helenville, where the Auckland titles were put together, and in Gisborne, the Rogans and the Wānau family. They're married, the Wānau family and the Manukau family. Those two titles I'm going under as being uh, legal with this flag uh, applications to land and its resources, natural resources, people and their assets and <coughs> financial investments here and where the flag went around the world. It's nobody's business to know where the flag went around the world or the history of the Manukau or the Utatonga is not for anybody to know. I'm not here to tell everybody about their history. I'm here to keep it private as their own history intact and not for anybody to see. That's like the Queen is doing the same thing. You can't inquire into the Queen's business nor can you inquire into the Crown's business because it's private. They won't tell you how that works. Even the banks have their own private admiralty law business tied up, and the police. You can't inquire into the police or the judges. We're in the same realm as that. Talking about the king um, with the um, authority of a chief or chiefs of this country. All right? Uh, I've got enough to go on. It's public now. The whole world knows what I think and what I do and what I say and where I go and what I tell people. The truth is nothing but the truth, so help me God. The King is extending his hand to the Chiefs, uh, the King of England I'm talking about, and the King of Britain, UK, and to the Chiefs to get ready with their waka to go sailing around the world. Okay, so that's all I want to say for now. And we'll cut it right there. Uh, not that one, this one. Uh, have a nice day. I've got somebody waiting on Skype. Bye for now. John, one of Uruhu, Auckland.